Okay, I think a lot of people that want to be in here are here. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us at this Screen Daily Talk. We're talking about regional festivals and their importance in the industry. Uh, this talk is presented uh, by Screen Daily in partnership with the Transylvania International Film Festival happening right now in person and online a bit in Cluj, Romania. We are thrilled to be working with them. My name is Wendy Mitchell. I'm a contributing editor at Screen International. I also happen to work for a number of film festivals like San Sebastian, Rotterdam, Zurich. So this is a topic very close to my heart. Um, we, um, you know, when we were talking about this session, somebody at some point said, oh, we could title it, you know, small festivals. And I was saying, no, no, no. These are not small festivals necessarily. Yes, they might be smaller than can, um, but they can have big impact and they can have big numbers of audiences. So I'm glad we're gonna clear up some myths about some of these festivals. We have four experts, experts joining us today. We're going to welcome lots of audience questions. Um, so we'll allow the last half of the session, the last half hour for your questions. So please do at any point, you can put those in that Q&A function box. Please don't put them in the chat. Uh, so just put them in the Q&A. You can do that at any time. And you know, I'll take a look throughout our discussion. There might be something that comes up sooner, not waiting till the end. So without further ado, I would love to welcome our for experts today. And I think first, our partner on this, partner in crime on this talk is Mihai Chirilov, who is artistic director of the Transylvania International Film Festival in Cluj, Romania. Welcome, Mihai. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Wendy. Uh, we are, uh, yeah, right almost in the middle of the festival. We uh, kicked off last Friday, so uh, now we just enter like a full week, things are going well, it's hot, it's full, no incidents, people are coming more and more, actually industry people started to, to flow since uh, yesterday evening, from today they are, uh, uh, they occupied their positions of expert, experts as well. There, we, we have several industry projects ongoing for the entire week ahead of us. And uh, yeah, things look good. Right I'm now. so glad to hear that. And I, you know, I know how hard it is to take an hour to do something when your own festival is running, especially in Zoom. So you've sequestered yourself somewhere quiet for an hour during the middle of an in-person festival. And we really appreciate that. Sometimes during a festival that's so packed, it's good to, to disappear for a little bit. Yes, wonderful. We are also welcoming Elise Jaladou, who is General Director of the Thessaloniki International Film Festival in Greece. She's joining us actually from Paris. So thank you, Elise, for being here. Oh, I think she's on, she's on mute for now. Oh, but... my. Hi, Wendy. Hello. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, actually, we wrapped the documentary uh, postpone open air hybrid whatever film festival early July before Cannes, and it's it's the right time to talk about the upcoming international film festival in November. Great, yes, two big festivals there. Um, we also welcome Carlos Ramos, who is co-director of Indie Lisboa International Film Festival in Portugal, and he's anxiously awaiting to hear what his festival can do this year in August. Welcome, Carlos. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you, Screen Daily and, and Tiff. Uh, yeah, it will be, we are kind of in, in uncertain uh, times and we don't know yet the grid of the festival, for example. We have several plans to know because there will be some meeting uh, this week that will decide that, uh, until what, which time we can have the screenings, etc. So it's like that. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Marcin Pinkowska, who is Festival and Artistic Director of New Horizons International Film Festival in Wrocław, Poland. And he's got his festival starting very soon. So we're very glad you could even take some time to yeah. join us, Martin. Thank you for the invitation. Of course, I would love to be in Cluj right now. Um, yes, the festival's in two weeks. I just completed the festival schedule. So I'm a bit, you know, shaky. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good to be here. Okay, so let's, I want to, you know, because not all of our audience members will have been to each of your festivals. So let's learn the basics about some of them. Um, and Mihai, let's start with you uh, as our sort of host today. 
in a normal year, <laughs> it might be hard to remember when things were normal, but let's say a non-pandemic year, can you tell us, you know, what time of year uh, TIFF was running, how many films you would normally program, and uh, what kind of audience attendance you might get in a normal year? Well, in a normal year, uh, the festival uh would take place end of May, beginning of June. Usually we are located uh, time-wise two weeks after, after Cannes to leave uh, the industry people who are devastated after Cannes to recover. Although we always tell them that coming to Cluj counts as recovery. Um, the number of films usually TIFF um, uh, got bigger and bigger during all these 19, uh, 19 years and uh, two years ago when we still had a normal edition, uh, we had um, uh, a record number of films, more than 200 features plus 50 short films coming from almost 60 countries. So in a nutshell, that would be the size of the festival, yeah? yeah. Um, how many tickets do you sell? Or how many? 100,000 tickets, yeah. So but yeah, this is why we're not calling this a small festival, you know. But there are more visitors because we do have a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, free entrance uh, events. So the circulation of people is much higher. I was just telling you the, the, the sold tickets, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and is it mostly not, we're gonna talk about the industry a little bit separately, but of audience members coming? Are those people who live in Cluj? Are they people who live in the rest of Romania? Are they from the region? I mean, of course, mostly from Cluj. Cluj, Cluj is a university town. Um, um, end of May, beginning of June, when the festival uh, used to take place, uh, the students were in town. We are talking about 70,000 students in, uh, in place. Although, they uh, happen to be during their exams. Of course, everybody <laughs> do whatever they want to <laughs> skip exams and come to cinema. They always need an excuse. Um, so um, the audience indeed is, I don't know, maybe 60% or 50% coming from Cluj. Then there are uh, most of the local industry people and here I'm counting actors, producers, I mean, all the players uh, with or without films who just come to Cluj, want to be in Cluj, visit the festival watching films with or without a job during the festival. And then we have a lot of people coming from all over the country, mostly people who are, we know them already, there are like hundreds, thousands of them who are just taking holidays, they're having their jobs, but coming to TIFF counts as a holiday for them instead of going to the seaside or whatever. And of course, there are people coming from Hungary, which, are ours, which is our neighboring uh, country. And of course, from time to time, we do have some um, crazy ones in the good sense who are coming from, you name it, just to be part of the festival because they've heard it's a, it's a cool place to be. Yeah, at Venus. No, I'm just making fun Edvina of it. Venus is a professional. Edvina's yes, professional. I know, I'm kidding. Um, Elise, let's come to you because I think Thessaloniki is another, um, where people also say Thessalonica. I don't know if I'm even saying it right, even though I've been there about five times. Um, this is another university town, right? Yeah. And you yeah, have... Yeah. As you mentioned, you have the documentary festival and then the international festival. Can you tell us a bit about the numbers of films you would normally show at those? Um, uh, so it's Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. So, uh, we have uh, more or less 100,000 uh, students in Thessaloniki. So the Thessaloniki International Film Festival uh, is taking place usually in November, early November. We have uh, more or less 180 films uh, of which 25% are global and 75% are regional or uh, uh, national. And, uh, and we have more or less 90,000 uh, tickets. Uh, it, we have a lot of students, of course, and a lot of um, uh, children also because we have educational programs, but we also have uh, the uh, audience. Um, coming from the region also, of course, from Greece, because this is the national film festival. So Thessaloniki is the home of the Greek industry uh, to, to, to co-produce, to, uh, we'll talk about that later uh, if you want. 
but uh, we are also used to have since many years the regional um, the neighbors also uh, but since a few years we have more and more we have extended the expanded the, the airport so we have a lot of direct flights to many capital yeah. cities so now we see like like Mihai is mentioning um, crazy French people or crazy German people flying from uh, Berlin or Paris or even Nice and uh, because it's very easy to attend these festivals get tickets and see the the, 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 the new films and to leave the festival in a very friendly way uh, so we have a lot of uh, cinema lovers uh, from uh, I mean in terms of audience of course yes not yes in terms of not in terms of the industry because that's kind of yeah. separate and the documentary festival is in March usually we have a bit less films. We have like 150 films and we have, uh, it's more or less 70,000 tickets, um, 70, 75,000 uh, tickets. Same, we have the program and the industry also. Yeah. Wonderful. And we have yeah, hardcore, hardcore lovers of documentaries in Thessaloniki. Yeah, no, it really is. I've been to that doc fest. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, we'll come back around and talk about uh, some of the industry side because I know that's quite a separate audience. Uh, but Carlos, can you tell us about a normal year at Indy Lisboa? And you know, are you getting audiences from all across Portugal? And how many films would you normally show? Yeah. Um, so usually uh, the festival in Lisboa runs in the end of April, beginning of May. Um, and, and during 11 days and uh, we screen around 250 films between shorts and, and feature films, around 100 features and, and the rest is short films in several programs and several sections. We, we have a, a very uh, broad range of, of sections in the festival. And from these films, we screen like 20% are Portuguese films, national films, more or less. And mainly the, the people that come to the festival is from Lisbon and the cities around. Lisbon is a very small city, like uh, 500,000 people. But uh, because during the, the, the weekday, uh, most of the people that uh, live around Lisbon come to travel, to come to work to, to Lisbon. So it can, it can uh, raise the numbers uh, uh, a lot. So, but mainly uh, the audience from the, from the English world co comes from the city, Lisbon and the, the cities that are next to, to Lisbon. And it's a very uh, urban audience. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I was checking the numbers of uh, last editions. And so the majority of people is, is female. Uh, and we have the, 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 the age, I would, the main age group will be between 20 and 30 years old. So it's a very young audience. And, and we get around 35,000 people during the festival and 45,000 for the parallel activities because we also have uh, concerts, uh, all, the, all another, all uh, a big range of activities. So it's uh, a little more than that. But uh, in, in the cinemas will be around 35,000. Okay, thank you. Um, very healthy. Um, Martin, um, I know you've got some big numbers. Um, well, we should also mention there, New Horizons has, the organization also has the American Film Festival that's much smaller, but tell us about the big one in the summer, New Horizons, if you can. So yes, so the festival uh, is based in Wrocław, Poland. Uh, Wrocław, it's not the capital, uh, but it's an university city as Thessaloniki and Cluj. Uh, so we can feel the similarity here. So usually we have around 100 full-length films. This year we're going to have uh, 170 films uh, on 600 screenings. We added a few venues uh, and 90 films from the program were going, uh, will be presented online. Um, it's, it's 21st edition of the festival. Um, our audience is very loyal and very young. The average viewer is 31, so it's, it's really, it's, 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 very, it's very low. Uh, in 2019, it was our record break, breaking year. Uh, we gathered uh, 120,000 admissions. And last year, we had the festival in November, not in, for the first time, not, not during summer. We couldn't do it during summer. It was mainly virtual with only a few symbolic physical screenings. And uh, thanks to lockdown and our loyal audience, we gathered around 115,000 admissions. Wow. Mm -hmm. So um, 
so yeah, the, the, this year the festival is uh, a bit later. Usually it's uh, late July. This year it's uh, mid August. Um, eleven days, but eleven days physical festival and uh, and uh, seventeen days uh, online extension of the festival. I call it extension. Okay, and I can attest those young audiences are having a good time in Vratsov. It's a party atmosphere, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, very engaged audience. So I'm gonna go back around and I wanna hear a little bit more about what you do for the industry and especially who, you know, if you think you're sort of supporting the regional industry, what do you consider your region? So Mihai, can we ask you that? Cause I know uh, TIFF has a lot of industry activities and how are you helping local and regional filmmakers? Well, I will <clears throat> first, I will tell you that, uh, well, I'm dealing with the artistic side of the festival. I am involved in the industry programs only uh, as a consultant, yes. of course. Uh, and especially this year, we have a brand new team. I mean, all four people uh, running the industry programs are, are new, but things are doing very well. Uh, TIFF started as a, as a strictly audience festival. That was our main priority because audience was someone that we needed to, to win back. Uh, and the industry program started to be uh, step by step introduced and relevant with uh, 2014. And most of the programs um, uh, we started with back then are still in position. So we do have um, we do have a lot of programs, as you as you said. Probably the most uh, most important is the so-called Transylvania Pitch Stop, which is designed for um, a co-productions with country within the um, region, like neighboring countries, uh, um, and. Um, it consists of uh, submissions of projects who are looking for co-producers and there's a jury and there are experts who, and there are all the filmmakers and producing coming and pitching their, their films and they're looking for assistant and being taught how to uh, better pitch their project in uh, other, uh, other sessions after Cluj and stuff like that. And um, of course this part, which was pretty shy at the beginning got more and more important as I said, because uh, uh, we are just looking at numbers, you know, and at headlines, there were like more and more titles that started as projects inclusion ended up in festivals as awarded films three, four, five years uh, later. Last night, for instance, I had uh, uh, the Romanian, uh, the national premiere of a Romanian film that actually was the winner of our first Transylvania Beach so, yeah. uh, edition in 2014. So you can imagine seven years in the making for that film who was just a little project. And it's the second film by Daniel Sandu, uh, The Father Who Moves Mountains. Um, I think we are not that, let's say, uh, as strong as other platforms, you know, which are open for co-productions like the ones in Sarajevo and, uh, and uh, other festival who are doing this for a much longer time, which much more expertise. Um, but we are, it's important to do it because uh, we are, as other festivals uh, doing the same thing, uh, we are covering different regions because we are starting from this uh, um, region thing. And there are actually more and more, you know, like Turkish film, for instance, who are looking for, a there are more and more Turkish Romanian co-productions. They come to Romania to submit to their projects and, uh, and uh, find, um, uh, a Romanian partner and uh, there are more and more Turkish films made and opening in festivals which are quite uh, quite successful and uh, apart from uh, again um, other industry programs that every festival is doing you know like the so-called close screenings that we are doing in order to promote the the brand new Romanian films in work in progress stage or or um, almost like a final cut, you know, um, to be presented in front of sales agent or of course no press or festival representative. Uh, we did have like everybody, I guess, you know, films that were shown in closed screenings here, including co-productions with Romania and the neighboring countries that ended up 
in festivals that took place six or seven months later after, after Cluj. And we do have several new initiatives this year, especially after this pandemic year. It was this urge, this need to come up with something new, you know, with a, with a fresh input and impulse. And uh, there are several uh, initiatives related to this emergency of the um, of TV drama and series. This is the the, the, the next uh, hot thing, you know, in the festival circuit. So we have on one side this drama room uh, program, which is open to people who are uh, trying to learn how to how to write uh, yeah. the pilot or how to establish a connection in this milieu, or um, because because the process is completely different. And on the other side. Uh, uh, we just want to get involved, you know, and uh, in the in the production of new TV series. That was something that we did in the past when we were organizing a script contest in partnership with HBO. But right now, there is a need of, uh, especially right now, there's a need again to get, win back the audience, you know, in, in cinema. So uh, we restarted this initiative of uh, um, a script contest designed for genre films, but both for uh, series and, uh, and feature films, uh, which, uh, we just ended the jury and there are super good, uh, super, super good project. Mm -hmm. And we indeed, uh, compared to the Transylvania Pitch Stop project where we are just asking for producers to come, you know, and uh, connect and know each other and hopefully uh, uh, start uh, working together. With this program, we just want to be involved as a festival. Um, sort of a Transylvania Film Festival label as a co-producer of this type of films for the future films or uh, or um, uh, series. And last but not least, uh, we introduced this Final Cut uh, program, mm. uh, which is a fresh initiative designed uh, not for projects, but for films that are already being shot, you know, and put together roughly that desperately needs, you know, a feedback, because we all know when you you just shot a film you tend to put everything together it's so hard to cut this and that so you need some people to tell you well maybe this can go out so this program uh, just started this morning yeah we'll see the outcome amazing so much that you're doing for filmmakers uh, not just in the country but in the region and connecting with international industry and that while you were talking it reminded me of somewhere like melbourne film festival um you know through their premier fund, actually putting production funding into Justin Kurzel's Neutrum, but just premiered at Cannes, you know, so festivals can also be part of that ecosystem if they have some funding support. Um, at least what, what I know Thessaloniki does a lot, um, especially at the big one. I, I know a little bit less about the industry side of the dark one, but you do a lot for the region. And can you tell us how you define the region? Uh, the region is Balkan and Southeast um, uh, Europe and also the, all the east of Mediterranean um, area. So it goes from Libya to um, Egypt, uh, Israel, uh, Lebanon and Turkey, of course, <laughs> and, uh, and all Europe. I mean, all east of Europe, Southeast of Europe. So uh, we are focusing mainly on these region, but of course, with that, we have to be global at the same time. So it's, uh, we, 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 we try to find a balance, but it's true that um, for support, uh, I mean, everything that has to do with the support to the directors and the industry, it's mainly in this region that we are focusing on. And um, so we have uh, initiatives uh, in uh, concerning the programs and also initiatives concerning the industry. So uh, for instance, for the, the programs, we have a few competitions, but we have a new competition also called Meet uh, the Neighbors. Huh. Since last year, uh, we have also, uh, for instance, um, this um, specific um, section, which is not in, yeah, not in the program, but it has to do with the original. So it's uh, Meet the Future and it's in the industry, and we are presenting the new generation, whether of direct, uh, Greek um, artists or directors or DOP, or for instance, in the documentary festival, we introduced the new generation of Serbians, uh, young directors of the documentaries. 
So we have, of course, we have the co-production platform, the 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 working um, the working progress platform, uh, but also since a few years we try to have specific initiatives to help uh, directors. For instance, for the Greek directors, uh, we have decided since uh, three years when we used to travel that every director who is selected in um, uh, a category film festival would have um, support, financial support for the festival to help being, uh, for instance, if you are young, you are going to Berlin in, uh, in competition or in a parallel section, you need to bring your team, you need to prepare marketing. So we are supporting them uh, financially to do that. So we have done this since um, three years now and we are going to continue, of course. Uh, also, during the pandemic, we tried to um, be more supportive also. Uh, we curated uh, short films from uh, Greek uh, directors um, to help them be active also and, and to, to earn um, something also, even if it was quite symbolic, but it was uh, something. And it was a, a window also because um, we had uh, this program on YouTube, which was uh, widely... Uh, seen um, all over the world because we curated uh, local, uh, the local uh, directors, but also international directors like uh, Jason K or Ildiko Enyedi. So uh, we had a, it had a huge impact. We have also increased the screening fees to support the industry, to support the producers. Uh, I'm trying to see the list that I did. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we are training also. Uh, we are training the regions, so we are training the the, the young uh, sales agents and distributors with the Locarno Film Academy. Ah. We are working also, uh, it's the third, third year in a row, I, I don't know yet if we are going to do it this year, with Europa Cinema to train the regional exhibitors also. So uh, in order to be uh, uh, up to date uh, for uh, everything that has to do with uh, uh, audience building and uh, marketing for uh, the regional uh, directors of theaters. Um, so we, 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 we try to be, um, to be as, um, as global and as uh, comprehensive as possible. Uh, yeah. Really the, across a lot of that ecosystem. Yeah, it's not just a filmmaker. It's the whole value chain that you're yeah, trying to it's work with. From, uh, it's from uh, you know, writing, to uh, marketing and exhibitors. So it's, it's quite comprehensive. And we are really trying to strengthen now all the weak, the weak um, part of it, of the, of the work uh, load of the process. Uh, not enough cash around. We try to, to, to support, I mean, we are not very rich, but as much as possible to be fair also. We, we need to act fair and to, to pay the screening fees, to support the directors, and to give them um, opportunities to be seen. Um, so we are trying to be a window and a support, supportive um, um, partner. Hmm. Yeah. Great, thank you. You're doing a lot. Um, Carlos, can you talk about what Indie Lisboa does for the industry and specifically for Portuguese filmmakers, how you're working with them? Yeah, uh, mainly it's, it's for Portuguese films. Uh, like Mihai, I'm also a consultant for the industry. There is an own team that organizes this, this branch of the festival. But uh, uh, we organize these uh, Lisbon screenings, like we, we, we screen for international uh, programmers, sales agents, uh, distributors, um, some Portuguese films, features and short films that uh, were uh, didn't have the premiere yet or are work in progress uh, works. So we screen them, we bring uh, several guests to the festival and during three days, we uh, put them in a cinema and uh, to screen these, these, these films and to organize uh, discussions and, and meetings with the, the directors, the producers and the, and the and international guests. We also created some years ago the Portuguese Film Fund. That is a, a complementary tool uh, to support the um, 
the, the finishing of, uh, of, of Portuguese films that can be also in co-production, shorts and features, and it's it's focused on, on the sound post-production and creation of original music. So we have a financial help, we, hate, we have uh, services in sound post-production, and we also give money for the creation of original music for the films. There is an international jury to carry on a, a pitch, and then they define the winners. That are there. There, there are more or less ten projects per, per per festival that are selected, and then we have a collaboration. Uh, this year we had already two years ago with uh, with Squatter Factory, a program that is called Plot, that is a professional script development lab. So this is an international lab. So all all directors from all over the world can apply. And then they um, they will meet uh, uh, international mentors, so they can work on the narrative skills. And usually, all of these uh, industry uh, uh, projects are in person in the festival. Since last year, because of the pandemic, we had to move these to online. So uh, the festival now runs in person, but the industry activities are mainly happening online and uh, which also gives the opportunity to more programmers, more distributors, more producers can, can uh, participate in, in these in this projects. Great, um, and I do wanna recognize we're already getting some really good questions in, so we're gonna make time for those, but um, Martin, I know that you do a lot for the industry and I know you do, Polish days usually, but I've sort of lost track if in the pandemic, did that sort of happen with the festival? Did it happen online? Yeah, maybe you can give us a sort of overview and what you're doing this year. Yeah, absolutely. One of the most important aims of the festival is to promote Polish cinema. So we put the, the films into our program and we support especially radical experimental films. They need support in Poland. Um, and our most important uh, industry event is Polish Days, 10th mm, edition this year. Last year we, we had to do it online, of course, uh, during summer. Um, this year it's going to be hybrid. Uh, it's co-organized together with uh, the Polish Film Institute and every year we present over 20 new Polish uh, film projects uh, at different stages of development, um, pitching of projects, works in progress, completed films. So, you know, it's a place to, to connect, to network. It's a place to connect Polish uh, producers, uh, film institutions, uh, directors, filmmakers, talents with international, mm, international industry, film programmers, distributors, producers, um, and, and uh, sales agents. Um, so usually we have around 180 guests, uh, including uh, over 100 from abroad. But of course, this year is, uh, again, uh, unique and very difficult because you know everything is squeezed in two months uh, <laughs> summer break. So uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of our uh, our our friends industry events like Carlo Vivario, Locarno, yeah. Sarajevo. Everything uh, is happening during summer. Um, so um, so of course this year the number of international guests will be a bit lower. But you know, we do our job. We uh, we do our job, and uh, it's definitely the best place to uh, to know new Polish projects. And you know, the Polish cinema now it's 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 um, it's you can feel it's it's uh, it's it's buzzy. It's you know you can feel the highlight on Polish films. And actually today, uh, amazing film by Jan Matoszynski. Congratulations, Leave No Trace uh, um, was announced as a part of Venice main competition. So yep. so. Um, so I'm very happy. And the other event, um, more educational, let's say, uh, it's the New Horizon Studio. Uh, we invite uh, producers, directors, du duos uh, after a first or second feature um, to give them the no from different European countries, not only from Poland, to give them the knowledge of uh, pitching, promotion, auto promotion. Uh, so the knowledge which is very important, especially especially now and for the second year in a row, uh, we have first cut lab ses sessions. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And the, the studio, is that the one that Jan does, Jan Nievsky, and they go out to a country house somewhere and it's like an intense. Yeah, Jan did yeah. everything. Okay, yes. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, so yeah, Jan, Jan uh, now it's, it's Veronika uh, since 2017, I think. Uh, Veronika Czolnowska. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, it's, I think it's very important to, to have, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, this year is going to be hybrid, but, but we, we really want people to, to be there, be, yeah. be in Wrocław. You know, it's, it's, it's always important, I think, to, uh, to connect people in a very informal, um, informal atmosphere. Uh, and I, I think that Wrocław and Cluj and other festivals here, they got something, you know, we have not too big festivals, uh, as you know, in, uh, in Berlin or in Cannes, you can do it. Um, you, you, can, you can do it uh, in a smaller, during the smaller, smaller event. So, so, so I hope everything's going to be fine. And next year we're going to have, have really physical addition because in my opinion, uh, you know, it's effective yeah. uh, that way. Yeah. Thank you for explaining all that. And that's a lot going on, uh, hybrid and in real life. Um, I'm going to ask one more question, and then I'm going to start to go to some of these great audience questions that are coming in. Uh, my question is about how do you approach the programming of local films? Let's talk about films, not just regional, but national films. You know, Mihai, I think there's a Romanian film competition at TIFF. But then if there's the best Romanian film of the year, does that also go into the, the international competition? You know, I, I, there's different ways to think about this because some people can see it as sort of, oh, we'll put all the Portuguese films in this section, but that can kind of ghettoize them and say they're not as good as those in the other sections. I just am curious how you all approach this. And Mihai, maybe you can talk about where do you put Romanian films in your program? I can put them pretty much everywhere yeah. um, because of the way uh, uh, we design the structure of the festival. But there are certain rules, let's say, which are very clear for everyone. I mean, we do have an international competition, which has a very clear profile. First and second features coming from all over the world, including Romania. So if there's a first or second features that's a national premiere being shown in Romania for the first time, uh, and it's Romanian, it qualifies for the international competition. And logically, it will also go to the Romanian Days program, which is our local platform of showing Romanian film that could be either in a competition or outside competition, you know. Um, during the years, because the Romanian films, uh, when the festival started, were just, uh, I could count them on the fingers on one hand. Now I need like several hands and feet to accommodate all the, all the Romanian films being made in the last four or five years. Um, but that's, and there can be years and the, it happened to have no Romanian films in the, in the international competition, uh, but the Romanian days uh, platform is a fixture. And actually um, when we introduced them, we made sure that Romanian Days platform, when we do show the most recent Romanian films, overlap with the industry program. Because, of course, the interest is sort of double, you know, to just give an exposure for these Romanian films shown most of the cases for the first time for this happy few people audience being in Cluj to watch them for the first uh, for the first time but also for all the um, uh, foreign professional coming from industry to watch them uh, here you know mm -hmm. some of them maybe they opened in Cannes or in Berlin but it's their Romanian premiere maybe they missed them in Cannes or Berlin they will see them in uh, in Romania still there is this uh, uh, misconception Perception that everything that's being made in Romania will end up in the Romanian Days program, which maybe could have been true 10 or 15 years ago, but not anymore, because now it may happen that, I mean, I had a record number of submissions this year, and uh, at least from the feature films, half of them were out. Yeah, including feature films or, or uh, documentaries. So I'm happy that I could still be a uh, selectioner, you know, like an artistic director and actually uh, select films, not just like watch them and being informed and put them in a program just because I can and I have, I, I have enough place. Uh, but on the other hand, I do have uh, specific cases, you know, that I could uh, and I do place in other, particular sections of the festival. You know, if I have, uh, and I do have a section called Full Moon dedicated to genre horror fantasy. And if there's a Romanian film that could fit 
that profile much better than being put in the Romanian based program where it might be neglected, you know, because there's also this misconception that if we are watching Romanian films and if the foreign industry is coming to watch Romanian films, they might expect festival films, you know, not necessarily genre films or box yeah. of hits, you know. Most of the time, the industry people are not that interested. I don't know why in watching, you know, the national box office hits, assuming that they might be shit or I don't know, they might be not art house enough, yeah. you know, and uh, um, yeah, we um, are trying to find I do try to find uh, a mix, a balance between this film, but for instance, I'll give you a case, you know, uh, with the, a film happening uh, this year, we had the world premiere of the um, first Romanian remake, uh, remake ever uh, made after Perfetti Sconosciuti, you know, the Italian film that's been remade pretty much everywhere. Yeah. It was the time for the Romanian remake. You know, it's pretty tough to make a Romanian remake for a comedy like this. Good actors, timing, blah, blah. The film went great, but I didn't have any reason to put it in the Romanian days for the industry because they know the film. They've seen the film. They will never do anything with this film. It will never play in a foreign festivals. So I put it in my section that's dedicated to the so-called hopeful future box office hits playing in the main square, you know, in, uh, in town, which sometimes give me a lot of leverage, you know, because like that, and especially I used it this year um, uh, af uh, in, uh, after, the, after the pandemic, because last year it was super difficult, not that many films, but this year somehow everybody was just, like holding their films, submitted them, and we did want to give a helping hand to the local industry, you know. Yeah. I've been a bit more tolerant than usual, you know, as an artistic director. And I said, okay, it may not be perfect. It may not be here in a normal year, but we have to do something, you know, we have to be together in this and we have to give a chance to, to this. So I, I try to find and accommodate all solutions and all possibilities to give a chance to more Romanian films than usually this year. I don't know what's going to be the case next year, yeah. but this year it's a particular year. And I yeah. think every festival with a big national component has a sort of duty, I think, to, uh, to do this. Yeah, I think that's a really lovely sentiment. And you can go back to being really tough about the Romanian films you don't I like. Hope so. yeah. I hope so, I hope so. Uh, and Marcin, what would you say is the approach to Polish films at your festival? And can it get quite political? Which Polish films go in which sections? I imagine it can. Uh, so we don't have a Polish competition, but only because there is a national film festival in Gdynia. So probably there's no need. Yeah. So uh, we try to tr treat Polish films uh, normally as other international titles. So they, they can be a part of uh, our international competition. We have only one competition devoted to quite edgy radical cinema, uh, first or second, uh, second films. Um, and we have actually this year, we're going to have one film there. Um, and uh, so we don't select Polish films only because they're Polish. Actually, we used to do it. And, and, um, and the effect was, was opposite. You know, our, our audience, they, they, they didn't, uh, our viewers didn't appreciate our selection. I mean, they, they, they felt it was a bit dishonest, maybe from our side. Mm -hmm. So, um, so and, and then, you know, the film, the film has uh, bad reception, bad reviews, and, you know, uh, it, it doesn't help in further distribution, especially when we talk about, you know, and, and, you know, the New Horizons, we have very specific identity, very specific character um, of the festival. So if the film doesn't fit uh, our idea, so it's, it's like, you know, we can feel that there's something wrong here. So, but of course, it's the film, it's, it's, it's experimental film or it's maybe it's LGBT film or it's a crazy, um, crazy midnight film. Uh, it's, it's a good place to start with uh, New Horizons. So this year we're going to have only, actually only eight films, uh, eight full length Polish films, so not too many, uh, but so it's only like 3%. But always we are trying to find a really good place to highlight the film. So last year, for example, the opening film was Polish, uh, Kill, Kill It and Leave the Town it was uh, an anime, full length animation a film uh, presented at Berlinale uh, in, uh, in an encounter section, you know, made uh, 14 years in the making, absolutely New Horizon film. 
Uh, and this year, for example, we have uh, three world premieres of very important Polish films uh, in the gala screening section. So it, it's, it's, you know, it's the, 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 the most, probably it's the most important section, uh, one of the most important sections of the festivals, you know, with all the Khan titles. So having a Polish, a, a premiere of the film next to, for example, this year, uh, next to Golden Palm winner Tikan, I think it's, uh, I think it, it gives you, the, it gives the film the boost. So, yeah. so, so we don't have um, uh, a specific idea that, okay, so competition or, or a section, but, but we're trying to support the films as much as we can. Great, thank you. That makes some good sense. Uh, we have a question. I'm gonna start on some questions. Your friend and mine, Alexis Grivas, long time journalist, programmer and colleague at Thessaloniki for many years. Um, he's wondering, you know, during this pandemic, a lot of festivals either with industry or audience had to do some online components. And do you think you will continue that once things are back to normal? And what might be the advantages to doing that? Or what might be some drawbacks for you? Um, Carlos, can I ask you that question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we, we are very, uh, our strong idea to make an in-person festival. So that's why last year, for example, we could uh, move to online festival in April, but we decided to postpone to September. The same is here. So in terms of the, the screenings, I, I, I def definitely see it as, a, as a, something that has to happen physically because it's a kind of different uh, the experience and everything. But uh, we are moving uh, uh, in some, some parts to a hybrid uh, festival, mo mo uh, mostly in terms of industry because of the, the travels, because of the flights that are more difficult to, to happen. So since last year, all the industry activities were moved to online. With, uh, we, we, we still bring uh, several guests to the festival, mainly directors, producers, etc., and some programmers too. But the, the, the core part of the industry happens online with the pitchings uh, happening online, etc. And I see for the next years that is something that will uh, will will keep. So we'll keep doing a, a hybrid uh, format of the festival, uh, mainly in terms of industry activities. Yes, that for sure, that because one thing that we do for the industry is to allow that the, the Portuguese films can reach the maximum number of, of people. And the, the doing it online also, uh, you can lose something, you can lose these uh, meetings in person, eye to eye, that are completely different from mm. doing a Zoom meeting, uh, for example. But on the other hand, it also can reach uh, a lot of programmers that uh, in, in the past couldn't come to the festival because it, or, or it, we didn't have budget or it was difficult to travel because uh, our festival usually is uh, next to Cannes and some people couldn't travel to Lisbon before and the online um, uh, event can uh, allow us that these films can be pitched to, to a, a, a broader range of, of people and, and professions. Oh. Yeah, I went to Sundance this year for the first time in yeah. about 20 years <laughs> from my sofa and it was great. Elise, how are you thinking about maybe this hybrid model going forward? Will you keep some of that? Um, actually, hi, Alexi. <laughs> um, actually, uh, we already had uh, two online full festivals and full uh, industry programs and one full hybrid uh, festival and industry program. So I think we have a little experience on the online uh, <laughs> um, uh, experiments. So uh, the conclusion that is still uh, work in progress because we don't have a conclusion yet, but we know that uh, we are going to keep the hybrid uh, uh, format because uh, hybrid uh, for the festivals is quite easy. I mean, for programming, well, it's easy, not easy, whatever, but we are used to it now. Not all the films will be online, of course, because uh, we are not a platform. And uh, we are going to curate part of the industry, part of the program for online uh, screenings because we have noticed because we have the data that we could reach people who never showed up at the festival before, uh, for various reasons, regional or even uh, 
you know, people who cannot make it because uh, they have a handicap or mm. so we are even going further in that direction, but not for the whole program because it's impossible in the yeah. future. And for the industry, we are going to keep the hybrid uh, format even for next November because we don't know if it's going to be hybrid or online anyway. But also because uh, we know that in the future, not only we reach people who never came before because we didn't have the, pro the, 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 the budget, just like as Carlos said, or didn't have time, but we know that people will travel less. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's absolutely crucial to offer an online uh, option to everyone in, in the industry. People will travel less and it's the only, the only uh, uh, way we are going to reach them. Though organizing an online um, and a hybrid at the same time industry uh, program is extremely difficult. Much it's a headache. My goodness, hats off to all of you who are doing this because We've also got a good question coming in from Luba Balagova, who runs the Russian British Film Festival in Sochi, in Russia. And she's wondering how do you, you know, right now, if people were to come to Russia, a lot of foreign guests would have to self isolate. And she knows that's an issue. You know, hopefully that self isolation will be over in November. But how, you know, how have each of you, not each of you, I'll ask, you know, let's go to you, Mihai. You've got people coming in. You know, how did you deal with inviting foreigners when rules were changing last week for the UK guests? And how did you deal with this during a pandemic of juggling all the, the travel invites? Well, it is a nightmare. And especially uh, uh, if you think that uh, our guest department is pretty new this year. So, um, yeah, it's tough to, but you just have to work, you know, with the same uh, Excel sheets, you know, you are working usually when you deal with guests on one side and with um, your uh, computer open on the page of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for each country, you know, stating the rules, you know, which is on the what colored list, red, yellow, amber, whatever, which are the rules, quarantine, not quarantine, still, you know, because you as a festival, you have to know this. Most of the time, artists are artists, you know, they don't quite care you know all they want is to travel and especially it was so refreshing and uh, and obvious this year you know especially after last year i mean when we did open when i started to send invitations you know in early march you know saying you are welcome to the festival blah 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 the director is welcome to come the festival is happening strictly physical you know i was saying from the very beginning we never considered you know an online component of the festival per se you know the artistic side the the, the, the screening side Side of it uh, they were like really I'm coming no matter what you know so I mean for every festival organizers you know uh, getting such a um, an ecstatic positive response you know from directors and you name it I mean everybody wanted to come you know all of a sudden and you were like Fuck, what are we gonna do now? you know those the, these rules you know it's gonna be hell it's gonna be hell forever and it was indeed and not only hell because I mean you can adapt, you can learn, you can handle millions of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, Excel sheets and uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs rules and regulations, you know. What you cannot handle is uh, the random uh, part of it, you know. The fact that maybe tomorrow a certain country uh, where a certain director is originating from whose tickets has just been bought enters the you name it, what list that prevents him from coming to your festival. And then you start searching for a solution, sometimes bending the rules somehow, you know, you fly him there to another country. So you kind of play with the list. I mean, we are, a, I mean, we did a physical edition during full pandemic. We know how to officially and legally bend the rules. You know, you can do it if you are smart because rules, are rules but you can still ban them because they are not bulletproof you know so that's and and this year still we managed to bring directors uh, but also because 
you know, the directors really wanted to come. You know, we brought directors from India. You can imagine what the hell it is to get a visa and uh, an access and you name it. We have directors who came all the way from India. I just say hi to them last night. Or we had a big, big delegation from Spain. You know, Spain was like freestyle. You can enter, green list, green list, no restrictions. You just show your passport, no tests, no nothing, perfect. Then one week ago, bang, Romania put Spain on the red list. Why? I don't know, doesn't make any sense, mm. but it's not up to you to decide that. We just said, okay, tickets bought, what are we gonna do? Ask all, all of them, what's happening? Can you come, test this and that? And there were filmmakers who said, I'm just gonna fly earlier, you know, and spend one week traveling Romania and then I come to the festival just because I so much want to be there. It's up to, you know, I mean, and that was cool this year, you know, because it's, I really felt, I really felt compared to last year where this word together was a phony one. I mean, everybody was talking about let's be together, but let's admit it. We were all so afraid of what was going on that yeah. the only person we were thinking of was ourselves, you know, but this year, you know, when things kind of opened, it was again kind of safe, you know, to be together, you know. So mm -hmm. it was refreshing to sense this solidarity and actually deal with festival guests who did everything in their power and we did everything in our power, you know, to, to bring us together for the first time for real, you know, and I mean, not just words. Yeah. And you could see that because I mean, the town is full of filmmakers coming from all over the world you know oh lovely i'm glad it's happening um healthy safe in person uh fantastic i think you owe some drinks to whoever's running your travel department uh, we're almost out of time but i'm going to try to sneak in one more audience question which is a great one just sort of you know the big a festivals sort of get a lot of attention we were just and especially now with this crazy year's timetable we were just in Cannes. Venice announced its lineup today. How do you kind of compete with that? And especially in the online world, maybe with press or reviews, you know, are there ways to, you know, do that to get attention for maybe they're not a small festival, but it's not an industry A festival. And at least I cut you off a few minutes ago. So can I ask you that question? How do you compete for attention with Venice lineups and you know, for you, I guess it's you AFM news. You don't compete. You don't, of course, you don't compete. You just act differently. First of all, uh, I saw one of the questions uh, saying that they were taking all the attention and uh, being able to afford uh, World War Rice or something like that. It's it's not true. Uh, every festival, almost every festival, is geo blocked. Yeah. So online, it's uh, you have your own the the the, the you know, the link between the festival and the audience and the, the, the festival's um, job is to do audience building. So we have a special dialogue with our audience. We can reach the audience. So we put the films online for them. We know them. Uh, if you put a film online worldwide, who do you reach? People you don't know. I mean, maybe one person in Namibia, one person in Peru, but there is no audience building and there is, you cannot work on marketing. So we, we work on marketing on the audience that we can reach and we know that we can reach the Greek audience because we are geo-blocked. All the films are geo-blocked anyway. So that's for the national audience, audience. and we don't compete because there is no competition. Yeah. And the second thing is that we are not a list. So we just take the best of the films. That's all. We are completely free to do whatever we want. So we have the best selection uh, that we want. So that's for the, the, the second thing. And for the international um, attention, uh, we do it differently. For instance, I was uh, mentioning the curation of films that we did last year. It did well and it was on YouTube and we had a uh, world attention. Uh, so uh, we catch uh, the attention of uh, major uh, uh, newspapers and yeah. it worked. So it's, we don't compete, we do differently. We talk yeah. to our audience, we have a, a good marketing and that's fine. Yeah. And Marjorie, would you agree with that, that you're not trying to be can 
and you just do it differently. No, no, we don't try to be Cal, we don't try to be Locarno or Carlo de Vari. You know, um, I think we have two weapons. First, first one is uh, quality, and the other one is our audience. So it's and uh, and you know. For for us, you know, we're, New Horizons is like twenty first edition this year, so we're quite fresh, I must say. Um, maybe we're not rookies, but we're quite fresh. It's like uh, and competing, fighting with uh, Locarno for world premieres that would be absolutely insane, absolutely insane. We know our role in uh, in, uh, in in Poland, in in, in this uh, very specific environment. You know, it's quite a big country. And we know that you know 50% of our of films in the program they they don't have further distribution, so it's our role like festival our festival you know um, takes the role of kind of alternative distribution. Of course, we launched our VOD platform, uh, Art House VOD platform um, this 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 February, but uh, but it's just the beginning. So 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 yeah, I t- totally agree. Wonderful. I think hats off to you amazing regional festivals, regional and beyond, uh, for doing the work you do that is so important to to the industry, to audiences, to filmmakers. Thank you for being here, even when you're all super busy trying to either run a festival right now or figure out how to run a festival in a pandemic in a few weeks. Um, Really been great. Uh, Thank you to our audience who joined us. Uh, Some really wonderful questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to quite all of them, but um, hopefully this was an interesting session. I hope we all get a chance to go to some of these amazing, not just CAD and Toronto festivals, uh, because they're really wonderful events and you meet people and you learn things and you see the world. So good luck, everyone. Uh, Thanks to my colleagues at Screen Daily, especially Orlando Parfit for running the tech today and Mihai, good luck to you for the rest. How many more days left? A week, 10 days? One week, one week, yes. Don't forget, you're welcome. If you change your mind. I'm gonna send an email, Um, but thank you all for joining us. And yeah, Mihai, congrats on your festival this week. And thanks for being, to Tiff for being our partner on today's talk. So thank you everyone and stay well. You too.